Hey everyone, today we're going to look at my LEGO BattleBot Bruin. I'm going to be going over the electrics, the drive, the defense, and the weapon. Let's start with looking at the electrics. So, I've got a Boa's 3.0 power source. It is the most powerful power source I know of that's compatible with LEGO. I have a Boa's motor for the weapon, and it's a very strong third party motor. Um, and I've got the powered up L motors for the drive. Moving on to the drive, I've got a set of bevel gears that allow the motor to be parallel with the drivetrain, and this helps me make the robot more compact and small. I can easily replace the bevel gears in between fights by removing free axles from the side armor to adjust the speed and torque of the opponent. The wheels are joined by a chain. The chain is actually inside out because LEGO chains are interestingly more durable that way. The rear wheels are purposefully exposed so that way Bruin could drive inverted and self right. Alright, let's take a look at the defensive aspects of Bruin. So as strong as the weapon is, my main focus on Bruin was defense. I chose to build an overhead spinner in the first place so that way I can make Bruin's body small and thin with no open sections like in most vertical spinners. The benefit to this is that small perimeter means that I don't need to add as much armor so I could make the armor that is needed stronger and take up less weight. The side and front armor includes several 5x11 frames because the uh, beam ends connect very well with the other beams to form a sturdy wall. I've also built free front configurations to match with different types of opponents. There's a wedge designed to mess up horizontal spinners and it's also built with 5x11 frames. There's also sharp brick separator forks designed to get under an opponent and can be held down by rubber bands and I also have these long forks, which I don't see myself using very often, but they're another option I have. Lastly for the armor is how the weapon is connected to the body. It's put on so strong that in theory it cannot be removed in a fight unless parts are broken. Well that was a pretty dumb move, I just broke two parts. To get Bruin's weapon on as strong as it is, I have two parts working together, and that's the turntable in the middle and the yellow gyro ring I have around it. The turntable creates a really strong bond between the spinner and the body. However, it's usually unreliable because any kind of gyroscopic effects from the fast moving spinner can cause wear to a turntable. I learned about this issue when I tried to use a turntable to hold on a vertical spinner to a robot and the resulting issue was this. It doesn't even connect anymore. To counterattack this on Bruin, I added this yellow gyro ring. Without the ring, the turntable gets ruined. However, without the turntable, the spinner could easily get loosened and bend into the sides of the robot. Alright, let's look at a weapon. So, as I stated earlier, the weapon is turned by a Boa's motor that's plugged into a Boa's 3.0. Spinner is connected straight to the inner port of the Boa's motor. There's no extra gearing, it's just straight into the middle port. To keep the spinner from exploding on every hit, I have panels and frames down the center of the spinner. The original bar design with only lift arms ended up breaking consistently because beams would crack or bend out of place. The cross beams are just as important because they hold the whole spinner together. The contact points are axle tips because they allow Bruin to focus all of his kinetic energy onto one tiny part of the opponent in every single hit. Lastly, and most importantly, is the clutch in the center of the spinner. What this allows the motor to do is it allows it to slow to a stop in a huge impact rather than to suddenly stop with the spinner. This really increases the lifespan of the motor. Well, that's all I've got. If you have any questions I didn't answer, please ask me in the comments. Otherwise, have a great day.